You're watching a Hanford Communities Issue Briefing, highlighting important environmental cleanup issues at the U.S. Department of Energy's Hanford site in southeastern Washington, issues affecting citizens of the Pacific Northwest and the nation. The Hanford Communities Organization was established in 1994 and is comprised of the communities surrounding the Hanford site, forming one voice to advise the Department of Energy on important transition and cleanup issues. Demolition outside and demolition preparations inside. Workers at Hanford's plutonium finishing plant mark the final chapter of a facility once critical to our nation's defenses. For more than 40 years, employees at the plutonium finishing plant manufactured plutonium that was then sent to other government sites to create nuclear weapons. Today, the Department of Energy and contractor C.H. Tulum Hill are working to clean out and tear down the buildings that make up the plutonium finishing plant. Demolishing the plutonium finishing plant is going to reduce risk at the Hanford site and it is going to free up resources that were once spent on maintaining those buildings to be able to do other important cleanup work here at Hanford. The facility is one of the most hazardous on the Hanford site with radiological and chemical hazards inside. Remnants of the days when the plant was the last stop of the plutonium production process at Hanford. It was a job shrouded in secrecy and security. Uh, what I encountered on a daily basis was a long line coming straight into the building. Um, there was a checkpoint with uh, our checkpoints. We had to go through our security, uh, making sure the number one thing, no cell phones, no other items, no communication devices going outside of the building. It was a bitter pill to swallow some days coming through to work all that time and the, to get through all that knowing that they had a job to do, but they considered you the potential bad guy and you, you were the potential threat they were here to protect against. Employees who worked at the plant during that time would encounter razor wire, guards with guns, and bomb-sniffing dogs, guarding the product and the process. More than 20 million uranium rods fabricated in Hanford's 300 area were irradiated in Hanford's nine production reactors. The rods were then processed into liquid plutonium nitrate at large chemical processing plants. That liquid was then sent to the plutonium finishing plant, where hundreds of workers wearing layers of protective gear turn it into plutonium metal or plutonium oxide powder. The finished plutonium processed into hockey puck sized buttons was safely packaged, monitored, and stored in a vault complex at the plant until it was shipped from Hanford to sites where it was manufactured into nuclear weapons. Plutonium production itself took place inside this building, the plutonium finishing plant. Employees in two plutonium production lines and three laboratories worked elbow deep in protective equipment, processing what was called the product. Many buildings were added to the complex through the years, including the plutonium reclamation facility. Inside a four-story concrete canyon, long pencil-shaped tanks and several floors of glove boxes were used to recover plutonium from solid and liquid wastes generated during plutonium production. The americium recovery facility also recovered plutonium, as well as americium, from liquid waste generated at the complex. Newspapers heralded the opening of the americium recovery facility when it opened in 1964. Twelve years later, part of the facility became known as the McCluskey Room, named after Harold McCluskey. He was a nuclear chemical operator severely injured in 1976 when an explosion occurred as nitric acid was added to a column containing resin and americium. The accident shattered glove box windows and left shards of plastic on the ground. It sprayed McCluskey with nitric acid and radioactive americium. He received 500 times the dose deemed safe. McCluskey survived and died at the age of 75 in 1987 of unrelated causes. The facility never operated again. It was too contaminated and hazardous to enter and stay for long periods of time. Few entries occurred over the years. But now the McCluskey room and the rest of the plutonium finishing plant must be cleaned up, cleaned out, and prepared for demolition. The mission for PFP right now is to do D&D, &D, which is decommissioning and demolition and to be able to restore what is currently here, radiation and contamination, back to the environment and the public. 
It's a monumental task in transition for the employees who are now helping prepare to demolish the place they worked at for years. It's an effort that began in 1989 when the plutonium production mission ceased. At the plutonium finishing plant, more than 20 tons of material containing plutonium was left in various processing stages. By 2004, workers had stabilized and packaged the residual material. Some was shipped off the Hanford site as waste. Other material was stored in the vault complex. In 2007, the U.S. Department of Energy designated a national plutonium storage site at the Savannah River site in South Carolina, allowing the nuclear material stored at the plutonium finishing plant complex to be shipped there. That process took two years, and in 2009, the last of the plutonium left the plant, and so did the plant's security needs. And I hadn't heard about it, and I walk up to the, the badge house where I normally showed my badge and put my bag on the rolling x-ray machine and there was nobody there. It was like, wait, wait. I think I even stopped and called to the office and said, why isn't anybody here? Never mind, they're gone. I said, wow, it was a big change. It was night and day change. The only reason I use that is the fact that you walk in and you're under heavy scrutiny. You got used to the fact of being watched day in, day out. And the first time a cell phone ringed when you're inside the building, Everybody was shocked. What are you doing? Where do you have that? Why do you, oh, yeah, we could do that. Since then, the focus has been on preparing for demolition of the more than 80 buildings that make up the plant. Much of the equipment inside the plutonium finishing plant is contaminated to some degree with nuclear material. More than 200 large pieces of equipment called glove boxes and hoods, miles of processing, drain, and vacuum piping, more than 6,000 feet of ventilation ductwork, 196 3 to 22 foot tall pencil shaped tanks, and thousands of pieces of equipment that supported the plutonium production process. In order to complete this monumental demolition job safely, workers wear layers of protective clothing, breathe filtered air, and in the most hazardous parts of the facility, use supplied air inside protective suits. It can take more than 20 minutes for an employee to suit up and prepare to work. In some situations, a team of more than a dozen employees are outside, managing clean air supplies, decontamination, and safety efforts during the work. All of this work takes place in a facility that is nearly 70 years old, decades past its design life. It becomes more difficult and expensive every year to keep the facility's aging infrastructure safe for workers making it a priority for cleanup and demolition. There's a number of priorities with the state of Washington for cleaning up at Hanford. In addition to the waste treatment plant, the tank farms and cleaning up along the river corridor, the Tony Finishing Plant, PFP, is one of the highest priority facilities for cleaning up on the Hanford site. The reason for this is because it's not quite as robust or at all as robust a facility as some of the other ones with big, thick concrete walls. This is a metal structure, which is important to us to get it down for protection of human health and the environment. Much work has been done to get the Department of Energy closer to its goal of cleaning out and demolishing all of the plutonium finishing plant structures. In 2012, the plutonium vaults were demolished. Through 2014, several of the smaller buildings around PFP were removed. Inside, most of the glove boxes and pencil tanks have been removed or are ready to be removed during demolition. Crews re-entered the McCleskey room using equipment they researched and trained on themselves to safely prepare that facility for demolition. Over the next few months and years, more structures will disappear from the landscape, including the main facility itself, the Americium Recovery Facility, and the Plutonium Reclamation Facility. Eventually, the plant's iconic stack will topple, signifying the end of the story of the plutonium finishing plant's critical role in the Cold War. My entire career has been going towards that goal. And since I've been going towards that goal, realizing that this is history in the making. I've been here um, at PFP for 32 years. And it's, there's some feeling to watch it go down. A little melancholy of you know, watching my history being taken apart. Um, but I'm a realist too. It's got to go. To find out how you can become more involved in this important regional issue, or to have a Hanford Community speaker talk to your organization, contact the Hanford Communities at 
942-7348 or by fax at 509-942-7379 or visit our website at www.ci.richland.wa.us.